Daddy, I caught one. Hey, careful. Casey, hold on. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Casey. Hey. Morning, guys. Hey, guys, how you doing? I caught one. Yeah? I caught a monster. Wait till you see the fish I caught. I Sorry, caught one. Oh, relax, Look no problem. At him. Oh, wow, he's great. It's no problem, that is, as long as you tell the girls who's responsible. <laughs> That's Kathy, Kathy. Anyway, you caught Wait one, huh? You yeah. See the fish I caught. I caught it. See? See him? What kind is it? A big denison. Oh, gross. Hank says he's a record. Mr. Bowen. I see they uh, cut your advertising budget again. Well, every little bit helps, huh? Well. <laughs> Casey, in the bucket, please. <laughs> hey, pal. Don't forget the Vikings. Casey. You guys eat? At 5 a.m. I promised them a hamburger. Do you want to join us? Dad, we better not. We're really late. She's right. Come on. The girls will manage. Please, Daddy. Please. All right, I'll do it on one condition. Can we eat lots of French fries and a big chocolate shake? What do you say? <laughs> okay. And we were just sitting there and sitting there and sitting there, and it got really hot, didn't it? Sure did. Hotter than the shades of. Ah, uh, Casey. And all of a sudden, boom, and I grabbed my pole and almost stripped out of my hands. Remember? Yeah, I do. And I was fighting and fighting to reel them in. Dad? I did it all by myself. That's great, Casey. Really? Can we go? Yeah. Kathy, I need you to go home with Mr. Bolin and babysit Casey, honey. But Mom said I could help. I want to show him my fish. Later, Casey. Go on, get in the act. Thanks, Mr. Bolin. Sure? Sure, I'm sure. Casey and me will get along just fine if it's all right with you. Is it, Daddy? Please. Well, uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> Good. Yeah. Get in there, pal. Thanks for letting me have him. Hey, rent a kid. I'm gonna open a sideline. Circus, ball games, fishing. You're gonna make a fortune. Right. Slide over, pal. Hey. Buckle it. Hi. Hey, you're not done yet? What'd you do? Take a break? No, we're about to. Well, I'm the caterer. Very late caterer. Not my fault. Fisherman's delay. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's very, very good. Well, thank you, sir. Oh, look at this. Receipts. Ladies, if you're going to run a business, you have to run it by sound business principles. That means scotch tape, push pins, file folders. These are office supplies. They're tax deductible. Don't laugh. It all adds up. You gonna help us set up our bookkeeping? Wanna try and stop them? The first thing I'd do is computerize this. Oh, I'll program. Spit all over me, why don't you? Gross. Uh, Pete, we kind of wanted everything to be something we could deal with on our own. For someone who's not in favor of this enterprise, you're sure awfully fast to volunteer your services. The enterprise is a fait accompli. Now, there's a right way and a wrong way. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so says the vice president of the universe. Mm -hmm. CEO, I got promoted. <laughs> I'll trade you for the Prince of Procrastinators. Okay, back to work, back to work. Mm -hmm. If you're going to stay, no supervising. Uh, so how did the vision go? Totally successful. Oh, totally disgusting. Talk about slimy. He caught something? Sure did. And he ended up getting soaked. But did he have fun? Oh, I bet his playmate did. <laughs> he certainly appeared to. Oh, speaking of soaked, um, you know, Casey's jeans, that reminds me. I found them in our laundry and a mysterious chartreuse <laughs> sock. You know, sometimes I wonder if he knows what house he lives in. What about this room? You gonna paint this room? What will we do without you to remind us? Come on, Donna. Let Peter check out our files. Oh, He's not swimming. He's dead. Well, that's, that's okay because, uh, you remember why? You gotta eat what you can't. <laughs> that Vinnie Denison's gonna Tastes great. Let's do it. <laughs> Tastes great. Let's do it. Tastes great. Do fish go to heaven? 
Oh, uh, beats me. Maybe God's got aquariums. <laughs> aquariums? Yeah. Does he? Uh, I don't know. Office supplies are my specialty. Not heaven. How come? Because you don't go to church? Church? Me? I'm a Viking, remember? Hank the Red. Or Gray. Vikings don't go to church. What do they do? Oh, they ravage and pillage and hunt and fish. Fun stuff like that. What's ravage and pillage? <laughs> uh, well, it's, uh, it's all the stuff you're going to learn about in high school. Maybe. But don't go asking your daddy anything, okay? Vikings bury dead people in the water. Only first they burned their boats. I saw it on TV. Did, huh? Can I go swimming when we get home? <laughs> Well, you're gonna have to ask your dad first. But it's your pool. But you're his little boy, right? Am I right? I'm sorry, but if I hear one more piece of unasked for advice, well, it's better than having the overgrown boy underfoot, who, where the buddy is concerned, is kind of thoughtless sometimes. Oh, God, wouldn't that be wonderful? Less thought, easygoing, relaxed, and spontaneous. <laughs> well. Careful what you pray for. Anyway, it's not Peter I worry about, it's Mickey. Right now I'm doing it. Michelle. Casey this, Casey that. She'd love to go fishing. I know, I thought about encouraging him to take her, but then I thought they'd all get out there on the lake and spend all of his time with Casey, and she'd get her feelings more hurt. You want me to say something? Well, only if you want me to talk to Peter about his advice. Oh, OK. We'll let them work it out. That little girl's going to keep being Mickey until her daddy starts paying attention to Michelle. Hank, we're kind of involved here. Okay, let me check. He wants us to bring home steaks for a barbecue. Steaks? What's he celebrating? Probably that pinky fish. I think it's a great idea. Okay, but hamburgers and hot dogs, hmm? Yeah, better alert the fire department. That guy's got away with lighter fluid. It's, it's late. Yeah, it's 8.30 on Saturday night. Better get ready for bed, girls. Can we, Dad? <laughs> fine by me. Pete! Yeah, fine with me. Thanks, Dad. Mm, fine. Mm -hmm. Stay together. Take care. So, Mr. Um, Boland? What? I don't know. I've got a question. How will anybody know me in heaven? What's this about heaven tonight? Uh, the mortality of fishes. Oh. Daddy! Daddy! What case? If your mom went to heaven and you were little, how would she know you now? If you go to 
Kevin. No doubt about that. And I don't tell my mom grew up. How will you know me? I'll know you because you're my little boy, that's all. But I won't be little. I'll explain it all to you when you get bigger, okay, Case? You will? Of course he will. Casey's daddy knows everything. Wish he'd explain it to me. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Mr. Bowen! Okay. Mr. Time Bowen! Good young man. Bedtime. Good night, bedtime, Case. Bedtime. Whoa. You and your fishes. <laughs> Say good night to mommy. Mm -hmm. Good night, mama. <laughs> night, Casey. Good night. Night, Casey. I'll be there good night. night. Okay, here we go. Let's police up. That a boy. Make it nice and neat, right? Good. One more. Two more. There you go. All righty. Now, where is Big Dipper? Good boy. You got it. Ready for landing? Wait, Daddy. Stop. What? I've got a touch for him. Touch what? A star. Lift me up. Okay, there we go. Ugh. Star light, star bright, the first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. Okay. Where'd you learn that? Mr. Bourne told me. What'd you wish for? You're not supposed to tell. <laughs> okay, let's get into bed. Come on. That boy can tuck you in tight, okay? There you go. Okay, good night, Case. Daddy, can Mr. Paul take me to the ball game? Oh, how about if, if we all go to the ball game together? Wouldn't that be great? Okay. Okay, good night, Casey. Okay. There you go. What is it? Oh, nothing. I just... I'm a little concerned. This business you and Don are getting into, what happens to Casey? Peter, we've been over this. Kathy will be here when I can't get him home from daycare. And if she has something extracurricular after school? Well, then Mickey will watch him, or he'll come down to the office, or maybe you could spend more time with him. What's that supposed to mean? He needs to be with you. Yeah, well... Seems to me he has more fun with Hank than he does with me anyway. He loves you, but he's a little boy, and little boys like to... Yeah, I know. Fishing and football. It's not me. Bailey goes to school. That's when you'll come into your own. Yeah. Mm. I worry sometimes. I love the kids so much. And... Why can't I tell them? Honey, they know. I know. I'm feeling sorry for Miss Hunter. Right? <laughs> uh, it's Hank this, Mr. Bolin that. They're our friends. I know. Best ones we've ever had. Yeah, I know. Thanks for the ride. Hey, bring on the bacon. Hey, the whole hog. Take care, everybody. Have a good trip. Sally? Come on. I and you, know. Casey, when you get to church, you pray good, huh? Mr. Bowen! Mr. Bowen! What, Casey? If you gotta go on the road, how come you're taking an airplane? Casey. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Wise guy. <laughs> Bye. Tomorrow I'm going to rest, not just on Sunday. No, even though... Come 
on, Billy. Good try. All right, that's it. Explain to me how it works. Where is everybody? Mom's down at the office with Terry. Miss Stowell and Kathy sitting Casey. Great. Try it down, Casey. Nothing on. Well, go play in your room or something. Does it work? Hey, the Vikings wish they had something like this. Just push this. Watch the propeller. Here we go. Just flip it. Well, yeah. I'll talk to you later, OK? Guess what? I forgot the All batteries. Right. I'll tell okay, you what, bye. pal. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go next door. I'm going to change my clothes. Then I'm going to find some batteries. I'm going to come back, and I'll put them in that boat, and we're going to set sail, just me and you, OK? Okay. All right. Hey, <laughs> see you in a bit. What are you doing? Trying to find some privacy. Do you mind? No. Oh. What's that stuff? Out, pest, out. What can I watch? Go sail your boat or something.
pound is barking at. I can't, Daddy. I'm late. <laughs> Puts for you. A goes to A, B goes to B. It's really quite simple if you keep track of the uh, labels. Now, I really need to get back to work, honey. Daddy! Daddy! Mickey, call the police! I already did. Oh, Casey. Casey! <laughs> Go inside and stay there! Come on, honey. in a swimming pool. I I'm sorry, that's all I know at this time. Oh, my God. Peter, shut the door. Anything? No. Oh, Peter, oh, my God. All right, all right. Oh, my God. 
Give us some room. Give us some room. Accident. There was an accident. I don't want you. What happened? Casey fell in the pool, and she's at the hospital right now. Keep ventilating. Hi. Any allergies? Penicillin antibiotics? No allergies. Medical insurance? I'll be here in a minute. I'm fully covered. Excuse me, sir? Well, I'm the neighbor, you see. It happened on my property. I'm so sorry, I'll be sir. Able to... If you're not a relative, you'll have to wait outside. Let them stay. Religion? Protestant. Okay, I'll need intubation. I'll get the respirator. Still well? Yeah. How is he? He's holding his own, but it's still very serious. Can we see him? Yes, but briefly. He's unconscious. I'm the neighbor. And, uh, can you tell me, I mean, you know, you read about brain damage. It's too soon to say. Insurance. Yeah. Can we discuss it another time, Hank? Yeah, yeah. I just thought not now, okay? I'll take the first shift. You go home take care of Kathy. Yeah, if you need a ride, you can ride with me. Thanks. Call me when he wakes. I, I hate to leave him like this.
Starlight, star bright. Mom? Sorry. He'll be okay, honey. But what if he's not? What if he dies? What if I killed him? You didn't. <laughs> I will fear no evil. For thou art Why couldn't I have waited? Taken him with me. Learned CPR. There was no way to know. Why was I so damn careless? Well, there's nothing we can do about it now. He'll be okay. Let's try and get some sleep. Let us ask with the Stillwells, why, Lord? Why Casey? Why us? But above all, let us share the healing solace of our presence together and the comfort of our silent touch. For it is by sharing our common pain that we help each other heal and open our hearts to the infinite wisdom of God. Let us pray silently for a final moment as we say our last goodbye to Casey. For we know that he rests in peace, sheltered in God's loving arms. Amen. Amen.
honey? This just not what Casey would have won. I'm never going to see him again. Let's go home. We just know he's in a better place. If there's anything I can do, we can do anything. Tell me how it happened. I don't know. I've been racking my brain. I don't know. I'm sorry to be intruding myself like this. That's okay. Um, Michelle, two uh, months. Hi. Thank you, sweetheart. Detective Warner. Thank you. I understand that your families are close. Yes, we know. Now, why this investigation? Just routine in cases of accidental death. I understand that the sister was babysitting. Maybe she, uh... We wouldn't know. You were home? Yeah, I just got home from a business trip. I told the officers all this. Let me just ask you this. Since you're so close to families, does that mean that the kids are in and out of each other's houses like that? Usually, yes. Would the younger ones have needed permission to go on your property, use the pool? No one ever used the pool without permission, ever. So you have no idea how he got from over there to the pool? I don't know. I suppose he could have come through the house. But you were inside. Yeah. I was changing my clothes, and then I was in, in Mickey's room, our daughter Mickey, in the back. I was looking for something. Sir? What? I was looking for batteries. For a boat that I brought him, Casey. I, I sure am sorry about this, sir. Uh, the little girl, Mickey. Michelle. She was here too, right? It was out front folding her newspapers. Would you mind if I talk to her and look around outside? Folks, uh, I've got four of my own. Kathy? What's wrong with your hand? It's nothing. Honey, you better take care of this. Look, Kathy. I know this is difficult for you. But I'm trying to understand how Casey got over there. You've disobeyed and climbed the fence? Honey, I need your help. I don't know, Daddy. I don't know. So, where is this Viking boat? Somebody must have took it. Yeah, no matter. Appreciate your help. Can you think of anything else? Well, he was only wearing one sneaker. Who? Casey. When my dad got him out, it was blue. Maybe it's still at the bottom. I looked. It, w it wasn't in the pool. 
Well, thanks. You have been a big help. Are you going to interrogate Kathy? Interrogate? No. I don't expect that'll be necessary. God, I don't feel like working today. Stay home. I can't. I'll get it. <coughs> Kathy? The bus is here. What about breakfast? Kathy. Did you hear them? We just know he's in a better place. They're just trying to be kind. God sends us only burdens we can bear, huh? God, the cosmic artist. Jerry, please. Got to. Faith. In platitudes? I want to know why. Why? Oh, God, Peter, why? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want you to take care of me. I want you to listen. Don't you feel anything? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You want to know how I feel? That another man was more of a father to my son than I was. You said when he goes to school, then it'll be my chance. No school. No son. No nothing. You ask why, and I can't ask myself that question. Because if I do, if I start doubting God, then where am I? Where do I stand, you know? What, what do I have, you know? What I have to do is have faith. And I've got to concentrate on what I can know, not why. How? How could this have happened right here on Earth? How? And if we never do? I'm looking into it, okay? I'm looking into it. I love you. I love you too. I love you. I know it wasn't my fault, but it did happen on my property, you know, and I wanna I wanna do whatever I can to help, you know? Sure. And I wish I could help you more. Now, with that new homeowner's policy I was after you about, the liability is 250000 But this, how much? 50000 max. 50000 Sorry, I know that leaves you kind of vulnerable. Vulnerable? What do you mean? Well, uh, in case they want to, you know, sue. These are friends of ours. Our best friends. No, we won't need a screen. We'll bring our videotape set up. Thank you. I appreciate your sympathy. We're on a roll. That was the women's club. They're interested in the Caribbean. Terry, now don't get somber on me. You don't need to be here. I can handle all this. Honey, go home. And do what? None of this would have happened if I'd been home in the first place. So I feel like keeping busy, all right? All right. I'm sorry. It's just... The idea of crying anymore in front of Peter... I feel so vulnerable. So weak. I want to be strong. To have faith like he does. To be there for him. But all he's focused on is how it happened. Did he find out something? No. But a 
like if he can concentrate on that, then he doesn't have to feel so lost. So, this is good. Works what I need to keep my mind off it. Okay? Okay. I understand how you feel, but why do you have to quit cheerleading? Casey's dead, all right? What am I supposed to do, enjoy myself? He's not coming back. Thanks for reminding me. So what, are you going to sit at home and be miserable forever? <sighs> Wait, Kathy. You said something on the phone about new information. Yes, I'd like you to see it for yourself. It's right over here. That's exactly how I found it. And I take it you think this is how your son got next door? Isn't that what you would say? Well, I'd say that it's uh, pretty hard to know for sure and probably impossible to prove, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me. What's your point, Mr. Stillwell? My point? My point is if the dog dug a hole under the fence and my neighbor decides to cover it up by throwing a rock in it. And that'd make Bolin responsible for your son's death. Is that what you're trying to get me to say? If the hole were in here, Casey would be alive. Are you asking me or telling me? Are you being intentionally blind? Sorry. What I'm being, Mr. Stillwell, is careful. Very, very careful, because all this is supposition, just conjecture. And I'm still trying to figure out exactly what it is you expect me to do. I expect you to do your job. File a report. Look, you and Bolin are friends, right? Does that absolve him of responsibility? No, but are you sure you don't want to think about this? Kathy, there you are. Can you set the table, please? Dinner's almost ready. This won't take long. So, Kathy, how was your day? Fine. Kathy, three will be enough. Minute. 
I want to tell you what I found out about the insurance. Pete? I'm up and digging again. Looks like somebody moved my rock. Leave it there, will you? What? You think that, Casey, you don't think this is how we get over here? What do you think? I don't know. I never thought... Yeah, that's what I figured. Come on, Pete! All right, Hank. Tell me about the insurance. I'm just trying to... What? Be responsible. Responsible? You? You know what you are? You're an accident waiting to happen. Well, one finally did. To Casey. You don't know that. You don't know that's how he got over here, Pete. You can't. Nobody can. You're just assuming. I love that kid, too, Pete. Yeah? Then what about this? I don't know. It just happened, okay? Crazy dog digs all the time, and I just put a, a rock in it to fill it in. You don't believe me. No. When did you ever fix anything? When? What do you want me to say? I'm lazy? I'm a liar? I'm irresponsible? Okay, I'll say it, but Pete, don't accuse me of not caring. I loved him like he was my own. Pete, you know I did all the things we did together. The fishing. The baseball games are falling around. I'd have died for him, Pete. Yeah. And instead, he died for you. Son of a bitch, how can you say that? How can you deny it, Hank? How? Like your son? He was my son. My son! Mine! And now he's dead. No more baseball, Hank. No more fishing. And just fooling around. And all because you were too lazy to fix your damn face! She's suffering, Peter. Look at her hand. She's punishing herself because she feels responsible. Then this should help. Hello? Oh, hi, Hank. Yeah, he's here. Just a minute. He was taking pictures. But what did he say? He's heard everything I have to say. I'm not hanging up on him. Yeah. Peace. Yeah, you know, about what we were discussing today, maybe, you know... Pete? Pete? Hung up. Oh, my God. Come on! What am I gonna do? What's wrong? Just let me handle this, will you? Kathy? Go away. You understand something. You weren't responsible for what happened to Casey. Muffin dug a hole under the fence. Mr. Bowler never fixed it. That's a... Kathy. We have to talk, honey. I don't want to talk. I don't want to do anything. Dinner, Kathy? Kathy? I'm not the enemy here. What did you think? She'd be thrilled to hear you're blaming her best friend's father for what happened to Casey. It's the truth. He made a mistake. A mistake? My God, why do you keep excusing him? I'm not. But Peter, they're our friends. Yeah, he's my friend, my best friend. But every time I closed my eyes, Casey was there looking at me. Peter. And all I could think about was all the things I wanted to do with him and never did. He's gone. Not to me, he isn't. Not to me. And the least I can do is hold the person who killed him responsible for his death. You're not serious. Peter, whatever happened for whatever reason, 
the one with faith, please. God. Doesn't Casey's death mean anything to you? Where are you going? Out. Peter? You were going? Just give me the ticket. Stillwell. That's right. Osborne Road? It's on the license. Just give me the ticket, will you? Go home, Mr. Stillwell. Slowly. I almost took the call on your boy. I believe. I go to church. I pray. Tell me. Tell me. I ask you what to do, and all I hear is silence. Well, God helps those who help themselves. I can't stop thinking about how much he loved that boat. Why did you tell that detective that the kids never came over without permission? Because they didn't. Not while I was here. So what are you saying? I'm a liar. As well as irresponsible? Go on, say it. I loved him. God, I love that kid so much. I loved him. I know. Like he was my own, I loved him. But he wasn't. He wasn't your son. You don't have a son, remember? And your wife can't have any more boys or girls. So you went out and you stole someone else's son that you could pretend was your son. Stole? What are you talking about? How can you be so blind? It made Peter crazy that Casey wanted to be with you, and it made me crazy to watch you ignore Cheryl and Mickey. Michelle. It was Casey then, and guess what? It's Casey now, even though he's dead. Casey. If that's how you felt, why didn't you say something? Because I love you. And I'm sorry I couldn't give you the son you want. Donna. I never felt that way. It's not your fault, Donna. It's not. Then why did you wait till now to tell me? Roy, it's Pete. Peter Stillwell. Yeah. I I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was so late. Look, can I see you tomorrow? Yes, it is important. It's about my son. I'm going to sue the man who killed him. No, I'm not going. And if you weren't so... Committed? Obsessed with this, you wouldn't either. To sue our friends? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? I'm going to go on with my life. And so is our daughter, who, in case you haven't noticed, just happens to be alive and needs you. I'm here. You're not. Why does someone have to be to blame? You blame God. It's not the same. No. Because Hank was criminally negligent. Why didn't you fill the hole? Because I didn't know about it. Lucky you. Kathy? Coming! You leave her out of it, and me too. Case is dead. 
He's dead. And someone has got to answer for it. It's too much to ask that a wife and mother show more loyalty to her husband and her dead son than she does to her so-called friends. Kathy? Are you listening? Well, you weren't exactly whispering. No, I guess we weren't. Kath, this has nothing to do with you. It's just that your dad's upset. And, well, maybe we should try to be more supportive, huh? Even if he's wrong? Mom, it was my fault, not Mr. Bowen's. It's not your fault. It's not anybody's. Well, I was the one who messed up. It was an accident. Then what's Dad so mad for? I don't know. I guess maybe because if there's some reason for what happened, it makes it easier for him to bear. Criminal negligence. Peter, Hank is your friend. Was. Well, I still am. And I'm also your lawyer. I gotta tell you, Peter, I won't do it. For two reasons. First, criminal charges would have to be filed through the DA's office. Second, Peter, I would hate to see you do something that you're gonna regret. It's not doing something I'd be sorry for. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying do nothing. If you want to file the civil suit for monetary damages, I'm not saying that's what I'd advise, but I'll do that on one condition. Peter, I can't believe you want to drag Hank's name through the press, much less try to put the man in jail. So just think about it. Deal? Yep. Good morning. The medical auxiliary called back. How's next Tuesday sound? Fine. Excuse me. Are we not speaking? I guess I just don't know what to say. About what? I'm not good at this. Terry, what? Do you think I'm a disloyal person? Loyal? How? That's what Peter accused me of this morning. To him and to Casey. Terry, no. Nothing I say seems to reach him. I try to tell him how Kathy's suffering. And he brushes it off. I want to clean out Casey's room because it's killing her. And it's killing me. But I'm scared I'll fall apart if I go in there alone. And if I ask him to help, I'm afraid he'll explode. And the more I try to reason with him, the more he seems to feel like I'm on your side. Poor Peter. He's serious. I know. I heard about the pictures, about the hole. How serious. He's at our lawyers right now, talking about suing Hank. I'm sorry. I thought you should know. Uh, uh... I'm glad you told me. Well, there's nothing we can do about that. At least right now. What we can do something about is Casey's room. You want some help? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No problem. Hey! 
Peter, you better go. Are you sure? I'm sure. Put it back. Everything off the truck right now. If you need me, call me. Right. Now, before you say what anything... What the hell do you think you're doing? What I have to. What? Erase him from our lives? We can't memorialize him. Daddy? In here, Kathy. It's not his fault. You don't understand. I'm the one to blame. Why did you sue me? Sue me? This makes Hank sound like a monster. I told the reporter the truth. I'm not responsible for what they print. You're not? Oh my God, Peter, listen to yourself. Look what you're doing. He did it to himself. A million dollars isn't ruining his reputation enough. Aren't you satisfied? Me? Am I satisfied? If you had been there to watch him, if you hadn't taken that job, he'd still be alive. I'm sorry. First you blame Hank. Now me. Who's next? Kathy? What's our punishment for being human? Terry. Let go of me! Let go! Don't get involved. She's my friend. Your friend is suing us for a million bucks. Her husband is suing us because you would rather stand here giving me useless advice rather than talking to him and trying to work this out. I did try. Try again, damn it. Try again. I'm sorry. Oh, sweetheart, don't. Don't. I wish I could be more encouraging. The emotional appeal of a child's death is often decisive with a jury, even if the defendant did nothing wrong. In this case, I did, right? On the other hand, it's not as if we're without a defense. And Stillwells bear some responsibility here, too, remember. After all, it was they who left the boy with a negligent babysitter. Kathy? She's their daughter. For purposes of cross-complaint, even better. Cross-complaint? What do you mean? The Stillwells are suing you for negligence. We do the same to them. You mean accuse Kathy? In a manner of speaking, although since she's a minor, her parents are legally responsible. Hank, no. Mrs. Bolin, I realize how distasteful this must seem, but I'm afraid if it comes to trial, there may not be much choice. Even if you don't want a cross complaint, I suspect your insurance company will insist. We just can't, Hank. Kathy feels so guilty already. We don't, they win, then what? I don't know. We just can't crucify that poor little girl. Great. That's just great. You know, you're willing to accept Pete acting responsibly, but what about me? What about my responsibility to you and Cheryl and Mickey? What am I supposed to do? Knowing what a million dollar judgment would do to us, to my family, our kids. What about that? He thinks his sweet little baby's so innocent. I tried to tell him. No, he won't listen. He won't listen. Kathy, yes. Our kids are being hurt. Our families are falling apart. We've got to do something. I know, but what? What's Pete's one number? Why won't he talk to me? 
because he's mad at you, because he's irrational. At least he's willing to talk to one member of this family. What's he going to say? What are you going to tell him? I'm not going to tell him anything. I'm going to ask him for all of this to stop. And if I have to, I'm going to plead. Oh, great. That's going to look great when we go to court. We are not going to court. This is not about lawyers and lawsuits. It's about people's lives. Our children. You think I'm going to let him ruin our lives? What I think is that it is time for you to acknowledge your responsibility in all this. Clearly. Unambiguously. Donna, he closed the door in my face. You're acting like such a child. Because I don't want my wife fighting my battles. Your battles. your homework. Finished. Can I watch TV? What are you watching? Nothing. Why don't you get ready for bed? But it's only 8.30. Well, do something. I gotta get some air. What's going on? I don't know. I don't know what to say. I feel like a kid with all these feelings. This guilt and grief and anger like rage. If there is a God, if he does exist, how the hell could he let this happen? A sweet kid like Casey, who's never done anything wrong. And to you. Me? No, not me. I've done plenty wrong. Plenty. So have I. But bad enough to deserve what happened to Casey. You think that Casey drowned to punish you for something you did wrong? Or you? Hell no. What kind of justice is that? You tell me. Casey didn't do anything wrong, and you didn't. And neither did you. What kind of world is this anyway? What did you expect? I'd have some answers. Because I go to church and believe in God. So what? I don't know, I just thought... You know, you have faith. That's Peter's department. You don't think there's some reason for all this? Oh, I want to. Sometimes I think maybe God didn't let him drown. Maybe it just 
happened. And where God comes in is giving us the strength and the love to deal with it. And then I remember Case. Now he smiled. <laughs> and my heart breaks. If there is some purpose to what happened to Casey and you and me and all of us, and if maybe God knows what it is, but he's sure as hell not telling me, and I am so angry. Terry, I'm sorry. God, I'm so, so sorry. I know. I don't want to hurt anyone else. I don't want to hurt you or Pete or Kathy. I don't want you to. I didn't ask for this fight. I love the little guy. No, I know. And I forgive you. Why won't Pete? Have you asked him? Yeah, twice. You know I have. He won't talk. Not talk. Have you asked his forgiveness? Terry. What do you expect me to do? Get on my knees and get kicked in the face again? No, thank you. I've had to live with his easygoingness ever since we got married. And if I were you and this had happened to one of my children, believe me, I'd be tempted to do the same thing that you're doing. But, Peter, it's getting out of control. It's not what my lawyer tells me. Ours either, but isn't that what they're paid to do, reassure us while our lives go up in flames? Peter, they want us to cross-complain. Go ahead. But I can't mean that. I mean, what'll happen to my kids is bad enough if you win, but put Kathy on the stand? Make her feel more guilty than she already feels? Peter, if this turns into a battle, we're all gonna lose. I'm not gonna let him just walk away. Tell me what you want. A million dollars? I don't give a damn about the money. I just want... I want him to suffer. He is. Not like this. That's what I want. I want Hank to suffer like we're suffering. And us? No. I'm sorry about you and the kids. Casey's dead, Peter. Making us suffer won't bring him back. No. But maybe it'll bring me some peace. It was worse when he was alive with all the fishing trips and Viking boats. <laughs> he was hardly my kid. But now he's dead, and this is the least I can do. For Casey. Because I'm his father. And then maybe I can do what Terry wants me to do. Just forget about this and go on with our lives. So, you want Hank to suffer? And you want to forget? Yeah. All right. How about this? No! Keep your voice down. He'll drop the lawsuit if we move. What kind of blackmail is that? It was my idea. Yours? Yours? What about this house? What about all we've worked for? What about the kids' schools? Hey, what about our lives? I love you. I want you to remember that. But if this is the price that we have to pay for your carelessness and your pride, so be it. I don't believe it. Call her up. Not her. You. She's desperate. Afraid for her children and mine. I can understand why she might make such a terrible offer. What I can't understand is you. Who 
claim to be a Christian. How you could accept? In the name of revenge? In the name of our son. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not going to bloody my sweet little boy with this. Not this. This is yours. All yours. And I'm telling you, Peter, married or not, if you go through with it, if they leave, I'm leaving too, and I'm taking Kathy with me. If I'd known what you were going to do, I'd have never agreed for you to talk to him. Do you have a better idea? I want it to be like it was. Can't it ever be? I won't talk to anyone else. Hi. My name is Marv Winter. What's yours? Kathy still well? You're a long way from home, Kathy. And early, too. Must be important. I came to confess. Hello? What? Okay, I'll be right there. Bye. Peter, it seems Kathy rode her bike to police headquarters downtown. What for? To turn herself in. That self-righteous, vengeful. Can he see what he's doing? Terry? Terry? Are you okay? Yeah. All right. I want you to go to your room and pack your suitcase. What are you talking about? We're leaving. No. Bring clothes for school. Terry. I'm not exposing her for one more day of your guilt-invoking obsession. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Have you ever heard me? One time? One time since this all started? You never even tried. I let Casey drown, and now my whole family's destroyed. It'll be all right, Kathy.
forsake me. Forgive me. Piece of this? Help me, Hank. Michelle? What's this? Casey's boat. Well, I know what it is, sweetheart. But what are you giving it to me for? I just figured now that everybody's friends again, that you'd probably want to have it to remind you of Casey. We all have to learn how to let Casey go. Then we need to have a funeral. Honey, you were there, remember? Not in church or a cemetery. A Viking funeral. Like Casey would have wanted. Michelle. <laughs> Michelle. see tonight. I wish I may. I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. 